Welcome to the Northeast Kingdom Voice. I'm your host, Scott Wheeler. Today's guest is Kyle Chadburn of the Evansville Transit Authority. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Scott. Well, first of all, how did your music group, your band, get that name? Um, so I think we've gone through a couple of different stories because we get that question a lot from right. people. Um, but my, my version, and if you ask one of the other guys, they might give you a different version, but my version is that um, when we were in high school, which is when we started playing together at Lake Region Union High School, um, our band director, uh, Peter Gage, uh, and one of the English teachers, Brett Hoffman, exposed us to the original Chicago records, the band Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, not everybody uh, that <clears throat> has um, heard Chicago realizes that the first record they put out, they actually went by the name Chicago Transit Authority. And um, we got really into listening to that early Chicago stuff. And we thought that it would be funny if you took their name, but we attributed it to some place that has no business having a transit authority, like Evansville, Vermont. Right because it takes all of what, maybe two and a half minutes to walk through it, so it doesn't really need a transit authority. So that's what we, we, we took, uh, Evansville Transit Authority, and as kind of a joke to start, and then just never had the ambition to change it, I guess. Now, why Evansville? Is one of you f from Evansville? Uh, one of the guys in the band, Adam Shawn, who plays guitar, <clears throat> um, grew up in Brownington, right. and he had, his family has a camp in Evansville. Right. Uh, and so that was that was definitely part of it too. That we spent a lot of time up at the Shawnee's camp. So are you? Uh, you're now celebrating 20 years as a band. 20 years we've been playing together. Yep. And so you started your group. At least some of you started in high school. Yeah, um, we really we all played together in high school. Um, the, our bass player Chris Doncaster played with us off and on. Uh, when we first started playing as a band and started gigging, uh, my dad actually played bass for us for a little while. <clears throat> he was a bass player in cover bands way back in the late 60s, early 70s around here. And um, he saw that we were kind of more than just a little bit interested in music that we actually wanted to try to make a go of it. And mm -hmm. so he kind of stepped in knowing that we needed a bass player. And then a couple of years into the process, that's when Chris joined the band right. completely. But we all went to high school together. So how many of you are the original? Uh, the original, so out of the four of us that play in the band now, three of us were there from the very beginning. Did any of you slip away for a while just because life got in the way? Yeah, there were, there were a couple of times. So um, uh, Adam, who I mentioned earlier, who plays guitar, he joined the Air Force. And so he was gone for a couple of years when he was um, stationed elsewhere in the country. And um, so he was away for a while. And then um, uh, I think that's it in terms of people kind of slipping away completely. Like I, w I went to St. Michael's College. And so for the four years that I was there, our schedule was a little bit you know, tighter um, in terms of how often we could play because I was having to travel back and forth. But um, but nobody else ever really left the band at any time. Right. Now, your first few years, well, first bit when you were in high school, where did you at, where did you play? Just in high school? Or did you do bars or? Well, we couldn't do most bars. <laughs> your age? <laughs> because of our age, yeah. So uh, the ones who had to worry a little bit more about, you know, maybe uh, law enforcement checking in on them wouldn't have us. Um, we were too young, but we could play private clubs. Uh, and so one of the places that was really kind to us <clears throat> and where we kind of got started was the American Legions, okay. particularly in Orleans, but also up here in Newport, would, were really supportive of us and would have us come and play for dances and things like that. What um, about like Elks Lodge? Elks Club, yeah, I actually, I think the first gig, our, our actual first, what we would consider like a paying gig right. of the band was uh, was um, at the Elks in, in Derby and they had a, a big New Year's Eve party in um, 2000, going into 2003. Right. 
and uh, there were three bands that played and we were the bottom of the bill we played first and then there were two two other bands after us yeah. now when when you play because i know there's different different bands do different things sure are you focusing on music or like or do you also have a good time like do you abide in alcohol when you sing <laughs> <laughs> um yes uh, we we do certainly not as much now as we used to right. as we get older right. <laughs> um you know music comes first right. and it, it, certainly we never wanted to to be in any condition where we would step on stage and not be able to provide so you you weren't quality like quality entertainment so you, uh, you weren't like some of the uh fish guys in their final years where where they you know their party and kind of took a toll i understand yeah no it's never been that that kind of a thing it's it's more it's a uh i think it's it's the equivalent of a social right you you, you go in uh for instance you know the, the tradition of um of the uk right that's everybody after work goes to the local pub and and has a has a drink because it's a social experience, yeah. and um, and that's sort of how we treat the music too. Is that it's a social experience. We go out so that we can see people, we can talk to people, we can have a drink with somebody, and but it's really more about the music. Yeah. Now I, I mentioned fish. Did you go to the fish festival? I did, um, not legitimately. <laughs> <laughs> I was working. I was working as a line cook at the the restaurant at the Orleans Country Club at the time. And because of the traffic and everything that was going on, nobody was going out to restaurants, right? And so um, the, the the manager of the restaurant at the time had the idea that it would be really lucrative to make a bunch of sandwiches and stuff and bag them up and then go. And um, she happened to live in Coventry and so could kind of take the back roads in. And then we just kind of snuck our way into the, <laughs> into the I, show. I, I, I went to it. Not that I'm a Fish fan because yeah. I, I don't understand the music. But uh, I went just to record it as a mm -hmm. historic event. And which, it was, for sure. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, that was that was quite the experience. Now, back to the uh, being on stage, uh, I think a mutual acquaintance of ours, Todd Peronto, who yeah. is who is the producer of the show, even though... Uh, Kelby McManus is re, uh, is producing the show today with Todd's uh, support. And you know what? The name Kelby that's kind of like Madonna or something. Isn't you know, you don't have to. You it don't should be you, just a singular name, yeah, right? You know, it, it's one of those <laughs> names that just rolls off. Yeah, uh, but um, identifiable. Yeah, and because uh, uh, she's a performer herself. Mm -hmm. uh, now Todd was saying, from being now, he is a non-drinker, mm -hmm. and he said it's something very interesting as a non-drinker to be on the stage and to be watching people now mm -hmm. and he just says boy he says uh, it's some different when you know because people people you know who are a bit inebriated thinking they're totally straight and he said boy <laughs> he said i see some strange things now they don't they don't realize right i notice uh, myself and i think the other guys too to some extent now tend to be more like hyper aware of, of things when we're playing, especially when when people maybe are having a, an extra good time. Right. Like for me, I know that, you know, when you're on stage, <clears throat> you've got all the sound that's going right. out to the crowd, but you also have the monitor speakers so that you can hear yourself, right? right. And usually the monitors sit on the ground and point towards you. Right. And I am just like hyper aware all the time of people dancing and not wanting them to trip over those monitors and go down hard and, you know, <laughs> smack into the floor because I see some people out there that are spinning around and I'm like, there's no way that they understand how off balance they are right oh, yeah. now. <laughs> so I'm going to, we're going to put a uh, photo up on the screen and that is of you folks in mm -hmm. your early days. Yeah. And that, that particular photo, um, is from one of many times that the the guys came down and we performed uh when i was at saint mike's right um and i lived in the townhouses and every year we would sort of have a townhouse party where the, the guys would come down we play in the band and everybody on campus would kind of come over and right so who do you who is your musical hero or heroes if you were to say um that's a that's a hard one depends on the day i guess you know like it and it depends on what i'm doing 
I'm a songwriter too. You know, we've we've played in this band that, that's been almost exclusively a cover band. Uh, we did record an album back in 2014, which was all songs written by myself and the drummer right. in the band Travis LeBlanc. But um, in terms of playing playing covers and thinking about the kind of music we play as as a cover band, I've always been a huge fan of the Allman Brothers band and the the guitar playing of Dwayne Allman and Dickie Betts. Um, I think that sort of like um, rock that's influenced by every other genre around it is something that I lean into. So whether it's blues or jazz or folk that comes in and, and it's always rock music, but there are all these other influences that kind of get swirled around in the mix. Right. Um, those are some big influences, obviously, as a guitarist who kind of leans into the past, you know, guys like Eric Clapton and, uh, but, you know, as a songwriter, I, I, I really like people who are, are kind of, um, playful with lyrics. You know, Bob Dylan was that way. Um, big fan of a guy named Tom Waits, if you've never heard of him, he, he great songwriter. Um, modern people, we really like the, the Tedeschi Trucks Band. They're a really cool band. Government Mule, uh, I got an Avett Brothers shirt on. They're a cool band. Um, and then I, I, more than anything else, like most people, I think it goes back to the Beatles. Right. The Beatles are the greatest songwriting team and, and right. most innovative music right. maybe of all time. Yeah, now, I think, I, I don't think you go back to the days of of course, you, you might be able to tell me some wild stories at places you <laughs> perform, but were you around when, like, Warner's Dance Hall was very active in the music scene? No. We we came after that. Right. Um, Warner's was not. Uh, Max's out yeah. in Sutton was still around. Um, we played there some. Um, but a lot of those kind of public halls right. had kind of, We've heard tons of stories from wow, folks. Wow, I'll you tell know, you, I, I, grew, I, I, I grew up in that era. Yeah. And, of course, you know, uh, the well-known local singer, Wayne Warner. Oh, sure. He, yeah. uh, that Wayne was his well. fam, yeah. family's dance hall. And do they still have, like, mini riots at any place? I mean, <laughs> the hall used to just empty out, yeah. and it's like the police would be coming from yeah. every direction. and. Yeah. And the same was true to a le lesser degree at Paul's uh, Sugar Paul's House. Sugar House, yeah. Uh, but do, does stuff like that happen, like back in the 70s and 80s, or are people pretty good? I don't, I, I haven't personally experienced it. I think the one and only time that I, I ever experienced a place clearing out yeah. was um, at the time um, up uh, where the Border Motel is. Yeah. Um, and at the time it was called the hellbilly hideaway yeah. and I, I my understanding is it was nobody's fault but someone went into the bathroom and a gun went off and that place cleared out real fast <laughs> i can tell you <laughs> but as far as like a you know like just like the law enforcement or anything like right. that coming in i've never experienced yeah. That. oh yeah it was it was no. yeah it was a it was a different time i will yeah. say i you you could witness somebody clearing out a hall if you asked me to sing at one of your <laughs> events and i sang we would do it yeah that would do it no we'll have to try it sometime i, I have zero musical talent <laughs> yeah i i stick to writing because yeah. no i'm not a uh i'm not a singer so so what do you do in r your real life so when i'm when we're not playing music on the weekends or whatever i'm a i'm a middle school teacher and so that's the where i and you must be the cool teacher too. I'd like to think so. Right. I declare myself that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how the, the students feel, but yeah, it's it's fun because you can bring some of that music stuff into the classroom, and you can connect with kids that way of kind of knowing a little bit about their music, and then they're you know obviously exposed to some some of the music that we play just through their parents or grandparents or whatever. And 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 you've probably. You've probably seen some of your, well, how long have you been a teacher for? I've been a teacher for, this will be my 12th year. So Going you've, my you've seen people grow up and oh, yeah. show up at your venues. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting to see that more now, um, now that, you know, I've been in it long enough to, to have um, students who are of age and can come out to places where we're playing, you know. And, and which school do you teach at? 
Um, so I started my teaching career in Brownington right. um, for five years, and then I was teaching at Orleans Elementary for the past six years. And this coming year, I'm going to be at Crossett Brick Middle School, which is in Duxbury. Okay. So I'm going to be commuting down that way. Yeah. Um, so uh, what are your, do you plan to have a celebration or have you already had one for your 20th year? Well, we talked about the possibility of having kind of an event to, right. to celebrate 20 years. And one of the things that is difficult is, um, you know, we've, we've met a lot of folks over the years and we and made a lot of friends over, the, you know, 20 years of playing and um, finding a space that can allow all those folks to come in and, and and uh, enjoy the celebration with us is a little bit tricky. Um, and so what we kind of decided instead is that we would make the year a celebration. And so there are some bigger events, like we just played Wednesdays on the waterfront last Wednesday. And, and here's a photo of that. Yeah, and we had, a, you know, about, I think they estimated between 1,000 and 1,200 people that came and showed up for that, some because of us and some because it was a beautiful night on the waterfront, <laughs> but that was an opportunity to celebrate. And so we've been kind of celebrating all year long, I you, guess. You know, those Wednesdays on, you know, a lot of people focus on Newport's shortcomings, uh, but I think those Wednesdays on the waterfront series, I think that's I think that's great stuff. It's. I think it's, yeah, it's been fantastic for us. And we've done all four years that they've had them. They've had us back over and over again. I don't know if that was a, a logistical mistake or if that was just they wanted us to keep coming back. But, and, um, they, and, yeah, it's been great. And Andrea and Vero mm. have a they have a direct link, I think, to the big man upstairs because <laughs> the, the, I, more often than not, the weather cooperates. Absolutely. I, I think it cooperated every Wednesday, I believe, this This year it did, that. yeah. Uh, the, the, the weeks that, um, that we weren't playing, I, I volunteered um, for a few of them. And there was one in particular that the morning just looked real questionable. And then it came out and it was beautiful. <laughs> so I think you're right. <laughs> no, I, I think, um, you know, I, as I said, a lot of people, they'll focus on what is going wrong in Newport. But uh, there's a lot of people like Andrea and Vero. And, well, as they always say, it's not only them, but there are the ones behind it. Uh, there's a lot of people like them, just ordinary people trying to do... Um, extraordinary things and that's true like with island pond you've probably played oh, yeah. in island pond as well we did the friday night live thing for i think um six or seven years yeah now i i'm i've been good friends with todd pronto for many years now um uh and i think i think it's safe to be said you you have not made your first million yet as in the band. <laughs> no, <laughs> we came up a little shy of that. Yeah, but but you have to you really have to do you really have to love doing what you do, don't you? You know, I I, I think we do, and I'm not I'm not one to complain. You know, I I think that we let's put it this way we couldn't we couldn't play music for a living, mm -hmm. so it has to be something you do in addition. And so therefore, I guess in and of itself, that makes it something that has to be a passion for you because right. if you're doing it beyond a regular job, right. um, it has to be a passion right. for you. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's not a bad way to earn some extra money, that's right. for sure, and we're not complaining about that part at all. Right. Um, but I do know that like we've heard from tons of people like the folks who were playing at those those venues you were talking about out to Warner's and Paul's and all of those yeah. places back in the 80s that uh, prices haven't gone up much no. since then you much. know and and so when you're looking at you know big word of the day or of the year I guess is inflation right and you think about inflation from the mid to late 1980s to now in the 2020s the, the idea that, you know, the, the cost for a four-piece band hasn't gone up all that much um, has not kept up with inflation, that's for sure. <laughs> right. So now, um, who, are the, uh, who are the members of the band again, and what do they play? So um, the band as it, as it stands today is um, Adam Shonder, who plays guitar, uh, Travis LeBlanc, who plays drums and does a lot of the, the singing, 
Chris Doncaster, who plays bass, and then myself, Kyle Chadburn, guitar and, and, and vocals. Right. Um, so are you like a multi-talented person where you know different instruments though? I, yeah, I think we, we can all kind of fiddle around with different instruments in a somewhat competent way. You know, I can play a little bit of drums. I don't consider myself a drummer. I, I can play some bass, but I, I wouldn't want to be anybody's full-time bass player. But I think we all know enough of other instruments to be able to, to you know, kind of come up with ideas or, or you know, come up with um, some songs individually. Yeah. So here's, here's another photo. It's a group photo. When was this one taken? Um, that was taken back in April of this year um, down at the American Legion in Orleans where we were kind of doing another one of our little 20th anniversary celebrations with those folks because they've always been so welcoming to us and, and really supported us a lot in the very beginning of our career especially. Right. How, far, how far do you travel to perform? Um, I think it how far we would travel versus how far we have traveled. Yeah. Um, is is kind of different. We've been really content with the idea of being a kingdom band. Um, and that doesn't mean that we won't go other places to play, but we don't seek out, you know, Burlington. Okay. We just, we're happy playing for folks up here in this community. And if somebody, you know, down that way gave us a call and said, hey, we'd like you to come down. Sure, we'll go down. So the furthest that we have traveled, I think we played... Um, down near like Lebanon, New Hampshire, and we've played in Burlington. We've played, um, I think the probably the farthest that we've gone was like, I'm gonna say like Southern Vermont. Like, so we're not a New England band. We're not gonna travel all right. over the place, but. So what's your, what's the key to longevity? Because you know, a lot of bands come and go. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's the secret? Um, well, I think one part of it is definitely that we, we were friends before we were a band, right. as opposed to the band bringing the people together. It was, we were already together and we just happened to all have the, the passion for playing music. That's probably the biggest part of all. I think another part of it is, um, <clears throat> that we have always tried to find a way to make it fun for ourselves. So even though we, you know, you kind of, as a cover band, you, you got to play music people recognize, right? Um, people don't want to go out to, to hear a band play and they, they have nothing to kind of grasp onto. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't play songs that they recognize in your own unique kind of way. And that's what we've tried to do is add our little twist to it. And, um, and then maybe pick a few songs that people don't know as well and introduce them to something new. And that, that's fun for us, I think. Now, you've been together for 20 years. So does that mean some of you have kids that are getting to be old enough or who are old enough to join you on stage yet? <laughs> I don't know about join us on stage yet. Um, Travis, the drummer, he has a, a son who is going into second grade. So he's getting close, you know, to where he could be playing an instrument and, and might be able to step on stage. Um, Adam has uh, a couple of kids. Um, they're a little bit younger, so they're not quite there yet either. But in the in the near future, that could be a thing. Yeah. From uh, from uh, from what I understand by talking to Kelby when uh, McManus, when she came on my show and today she's actually producing the show. It seems to me like she was on the stage when uh, she was still in diapers almost. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, it's certainly possible. It's certainly possible, especially as a vocalist, you know, to, to come on and be able to sing. Um, and then, you know, we, we've seen plenty of cases over the years going all the way back to like Mozart of, of prodigies who are, you know, five, six, seven years old and can, can play an instrument better than most adults can. Right. But... Uh, we haven't had that experience yet. And, and that certainly was not me. I was, <laughs> I was no prodigy. So we only have a couple more minutes. Uh, yep. what, what more would you uh, like to? I just, I, I, this was a great opportunity. And we've, I appreciate you having me on to, to talk about the music and just to, to say thank you to everybody who's come out to see us over the years um, and supported the band because the, the reality is that you don't, you know, you ask, how do you stay together for 20 years? That's that's one thing, but how do you stay employed for 20 years, right? How do, how do you keep getting booked? You can keep a band together 
and sit in the basement and play around for fun. But, you know, if people don't come out to the gigs, people don't come out and see us, if people don't hire us to come and play, it's a lot harder to keep a band together because there's no bigger purpose. Do you and have a website? So we do, yeah. It's uh, it's the name of the band.com. So www.evansvilletransitauthority.com. Um, and you can go there and you can check out all of our upcoming dates. Um, and we've also got a special thing right now that's sort of like a, we're calling it an ETA museum, which is breaking down each kind of stage of our career with a bunch of photos and advertisements from places we played and old set lists and things like that. So we kind of put that together as part of the celebration. Let's end the show by playing one of your songs. And what is it called? Uh, what you're going to hear is uh, the first track off the album we recorded back in 2014, which is called A Way to Say Goodbye. Um, and it's one of the first songs that we wrote as a band, and we're in the process of doing some recording right now, so we'll have some new new uh, original music coming out later in the year. But uh, this, is, this is a tune that's kind of stuck with us and that we play live quite often as well. Okay, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Say it.